But uh, is the logistics sector on our radar an important barometer of the way the economy and demand situation is panning out? So Mahindra Logistics joins in now. They expect the logistics industry, of course, to grow at around 14% compounded growth to be almost 30 trillion rupees by 2026. Ram Praveen Swaminathan, who's the MD and CEO at the company, joins in now. Thanks a lot, Ram, for joining in. Um, that's about 2026, the projection that uh, you guys have given for the industry. But let's talk about the here and now. You saw some weakness coming by in the second half of the previous financial year. Has that turned in the first quarter so far? Or uh, have we still seen those uh, weak momentum parameters sustain? I think overall, uh, Q4, Q1's been a lot like Q4. So it's not really changed in any material way. Um, obviously, play within segments. Um, auto and manufacturing is stronger. Um, we are continuing to see some softness in e-commerce. So the put and take, I think, is pretty much overall the same. Uh, momentum's not moved uh, either way. Thank you. What's the expected softness in the e-commerce space? Um, in, say, in the current quarter, the quarter gone by, and how much does it contribute to your overall volumes? So, so e-commerce is probably, for us, is around you know, 18 to 20% of our third-party logistics business, uh, probably around 15% overall. Um, and I think for, you know, it's, uh, you know, growth has been slower, and uh, we are obviously seeing consolidation in terms of the first mile and the mid-mile. Uh, where warehousing space and assets, et cetera, have been consolidated because they're probably being overcapacity. Um, and, and that's kind of the impact which we are seeing. Uh, and, and as I said earlier, slower growth than we expected. Mm. Would, uh, you know, last time we spoke, I think uh, you mentioned, uh, Mrs. Swaminathan, that this consolidation, perhaps by the time we enter the festive season, uh, things would start to look a lot better and you'd be over with this... Uh, utilization of excess capacity which came up uh, during uh, COVID after COVID because e comp boomed. Uh, do you maintain that view? Yes, I, I think from what we're hearing, there are some green shoots clearly in terms of uh, the work which we are seeing with our customers. So we are an enterprise B2B company, so we essentially work uh, in our customers are marketplaces uh, which you know, and customers buy from. Uh, and we are seeing some green shoots in terms of expansions uh, at different categories. Uh, so I'm still optimistic that by uh, by festive this year, we should definitely see utilizations going up, if not new build-outs happening. You yourself are doing a lot of things. You know, um, you had suggested that uh, the Dubai hub, uh, the charter operations that start in the first quarter itself, just wanted to know whether it started. And you said that would help you accelerate volumes in the second quarter and the third quarter. Um, how has that panned out? I think moving well, uh, we launched uh, in the first first quarter, and I think we've seen some positive traction. Uh, that's obviously cross-border logistics driven. So I think in the second half of the year, as we said earlier, uh, in the second half of the year, we should see uh, that adding to the momentum in our, in our kind of cross-border logistics business. Uh, but it's going well. We are seeing some positive momentum with clients and customers, despite global softness. We are seeing some good momentum. Any projections for FI24 in terms of growth and margins? I know you've given us a long-term, a five-year projection of 10,000 crore in terms of top line. But what about this year? What could the numbers look like? Demand this year is going to, I mean, right now we are probably expecting, it's a bit hard to predict, uh, you know, we have both organic and inorganic elements in our financials. Uh, I think the organic part of the business, I think we do expect, you know, moderate growth in that business, uh, you know, uh, and uh, we are expecting consolidation of margins as something which we're working on. Uh, right, the inorganic businesses, we are, especially the, the, the express acquisition, that's been a bit of a carry in Q4. Uh, it will probably be a carry for some time as we kind of invest in expanding the network. Uh, but as I, as I said earlier, we are be optimistic about the long-term potential of the business. Uh, overall, I think we do expect moderate growth this year. I don't think it's going to be a, a kind of a year of significant growth for us. It's the way the markets are. Uh, the focus clearly is on uh, on margin optimization and improvement. All right. Uh, you know, you spoke about the inorganic part of the business. I mean, uh, the acquisitions of Revigo as well as Meru. Just wanted to understand uh, uh, what are Meru's uh, operational metrics looking like right now? Has it broken even? How far is it uh, from the blended margins that you do right now? And Revigo, when does that become a bit positive? The Miro acquisition has gone really well. I, you know, we, you know, we acquired the business last year, and you know, compared to uh, a you know, and standalone loss of around 
on pre-21, pre-2 cores in FY21, 22. Last year, the consolidated business, all parts of our mobility business actually, uh, you know, saw a significant reduction in losses, and losses were only around nine crores. Uh, we are headed well. I think this year we should see that turnaround really happen, good momentum in terms of demand, and synergies as well, which is what's playing up there. Um, I think the Rivigo acquisition, uh, you know, we are expecting that the business will be bid up positive in the second half of the year. Um, you know, we have uh, doing most of our integration work right now, as we had earlier mentioned. Uh, so second half of the year, we should actually see the business being bid up positive. Okay. All right. Uh, we'll leave it there, Mr. Ramanathan. Appreciate you joining in. Good luck and uh, thanks very much for your time here on CNBC TV 18.